Okay. Hi, Manoj. You can Hi, hear sir. me, right? Hey, yes. Great. Can I... Good to hear you. Yeah. Okay, so guys, uh, Manoj is uh, today joining us. Uh, he is a senior scrum master, and uh, he have uh, close to fifteen years of experience. And from last five years, he is working as a scrum master. Uh, in the recent, uh, uh, he has given couple of interviews. So I already interacted with him, and today we are going to share couple of interview questions which he already have faced in the past. So let's see how it went. And uh, thanks, Manoj, one more time to share your. Uh, valuable time with us so shall we start yes sure uh, sunan thank you so much for your time as well yeah, yeah no problem a, i i hope de definitely it will be a mm, uh, valuable talk today yeah definitely yes 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 so why don't you introduce uh, yourself yes yeah, sure sunan yeah so uh, as we discussed earlier right i have uh, total 15 years of experience in it industry i started my career as a software engineer Uh, from 2005 then slowly growing up uh, with my skills and technical knowledge is and last engagement was uh, with cognizant i joined as a senior associate on 2015 and based on my performance i got uh, promoted as a project manager on 2016 and then uh, i moved to agile space uh, as a scrum master so started i uh, my work with the uh, uh, migration project Uh, as a um, scrum master uh, facilitating the team right and uh, uh, till delivering uh, as a valuable product to the client so i got more uh, appreciation from client for delivering the product on time with valuable right so um, then i uh, moved to uh, sumit work so currently i am working in a uh, small company called sumit work here uh, again i am running a migration project which is migrating from c to java right so here also i am handling a team of uh, 12 resources for the same uh, feasibilities uh, let's see like how things will go yeah so here i am okay 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 good good okay so tell me something about uh, conflict you know that how you uh, handle uh, conflict at workplace uh, within your team yeah so before uh, i could say like uh, the conflict uh, definitely conflict could arrive uh, in uh, any places right it's not like only for the team member it could be like conflict uh, it's kind of like misunderstanding between two people correct so uh, in my case also it was happen the conflict uh, what happen you know like uh, uh, there are two resources uh so in our case one resource will do the coding then the other resource will do the review for this so co during code review what happened uh the first resource he felt like uh, the second resource whatever giving the comment it is just for some uh fake right it is not acceptable something like that i have more than experience for that guy how come he is giving some something like that they have some misunderstanding right so he was waiting for his turn when i will get a chance i will give comment see like that so so it was again it was coming to my knowledge and that time i caught them and i i think like okay this is not good actually it will make a disturbance for the whole team so i discussed with them and i suggested them to create a Uh, uh one rule right so this is what the code review should be so if we will follow this then definitely the review comments whatever we are getting that we have to take care so this is what i uh, suggested them and i told them like how we should be and uh, uh, yeah so that that conflict got over so such things many things will be happening right uh, sunan yeah okay good good okay so let me give you one situational question that yeah. let's say one of your team member is not performing well for whatever reason and uh, okay the one sprint is already gone and he is not constantly performing over the period of time so how you deal with such kind of team members as a scrum master what will be your approach all right yeah so um, sunam the uh, uh, during our work life right we have seen uh, many such cases where uh, like uh, all the fingers are not same 
so we cannot expect all the resource will work as we expect so such things happen with me as well so one of the resource uh, he was not performing well that could be uh, his own uh, family problem or his uh, he is lagging in technical uh, challenges whatever right so uh, if i tell you the situations how we can handle and later i will move to my case okay so normally what we as a scrum master what we need to do as for my understanding we should uh, analyze we should uh, discuss with the team try to understand what his problem whether he is lagging with the uh, technical skills or he is lagging any personal challenges or whatever so accordingly we need to uh, make an arrangement for the guy so that uh, he will come up so let's say like example you have arranged all the technical aspects whatever he is expecting and i arrange the uh, technical guy uh, who can guide him but still he is not moving further that means something problem with him uh, due to uh, which he is not performing well right so in that case uh, i think i cannot help him anything so i have to move him to uh, like my management okay let them uh, the resource management whoever is uh, responsible to for this let them take care right uh, sunan so this is what my my suggestion here okay okay clear enough okay so now this uh, with covid uh, pandemic uh, right now everyone is into so what do you do for team building activities you know is is there anything different we are doing as a scrum master yeah so uh, see uh, right now the situation is worst for everyone it is uh, we all know right so but as a team building uh, definitely i i would like to create a fun activities uh, in the uh, team build uh, so that uh, all the guys whoever will join over uh, like video conference they will um, uh, spend some valuable time by en- enjoying with each other so see while we are working uh, in office work life that time we used to meet together right so uh, collaborate together discuss together and we'll have some tea party or uh, coffee break or something like that but here the situation was worst we were not getting any time so i used to make some fun activities like uh, antakshri or some like debates some discussion about any topics we follow okay sometimes uh, we used to discuss about cricket how what happened here and how uh, the uh, all these thing yeah okay fair enough okay okay so uh, can you tell me like uh, as an scrum master did you bring any change any process change or anything which you want to highlight you know which will have a greater impact on your team yeah 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 sure so uh, uh once what happened uh, sunan uh, there was a situation where team thought like it's a uh, impediment for them so he, they they were not able to move further uh, to connect with one of the server so that was a third party uh, tool uh, which uh, uh, by connecting that tool a uh, team will able to start testing team in the sense like uh, i have two qa uh, resources they will start testing so development environment was fine but qa environment was having some trouble so there they were not able to connect with the third party vendor and they were not able to test so what they thought like this is a impediment for them and they uh, they were waiting for me i suggested them see if uh, i mean i was not suggesting something straight forward but i asked few questions to them valid questions and they understood okay this is what uh, the solution for this so what happened i i suggested for the whole team saying like if we create a uh, like a trigger right a, a, we will create a script that script what it will do it will connect always with the particular server if that server is not responding to us either it is a qa environment or dev environment or whatever there the script should run and once the script will fail it will generate a email to us saying like this the environment is not correct then auto 
uh, automatic one Jira ticket will raise to the particular vendor who is responsible. Okay, that uh, that tool uh, I asked the team to create and they have created. And after that, it was implemented in our project. And the same thing we we showcased to um, stakeholders, the client who was uh, engaged in here, and they they got happy for this as well. And they took this uh, 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 these activities for their development part as well. Yeah. Okay, great. So, so what's the feedback of your client with respect to your deliverables? You know, uh, do you encounter any challenges? Let's say, you know, sometimes uh, there is some issue at the production. So, how you handle those kind of situations as a scrum master? Yeah. So, uh, yes, Sunan. So, definitely, uh, we cannot expect always like sugar, right? So, sometimes we will have uh, all kind of tests in life. So, similarly, in uh, project also such situations used to be happen so definitely i used to get appreciation at the same time uh, in some cases when there was a challenge uh, client used to highlight their feedback so if we do some fail from there only we will learn and we can move forward to uh, overcome the the challenges right so learning is possible only when you do some challenges so what happened? No, sometimes uh, uh, during ECG implementation, one of the tool, uh, my team met and um, uh, my developers, uh, those team were new to that ECG implementation, right? So they uh, they just started uh, work on this, but uh, unfortunately uh, there was some script which we we were missed while uh, going through the documentation. So client told, I have given you. Uh, like uh, two days time, but you are not coming up with any uh, uh, like uh, your understanding, right? So that challenges was happened. Then uh, what happened? I told them, I, I discussed with the product owner because product owner was from client side. And uh, I told them the challenges, whatever we are having now. And they also understood that challenge, but how come it was a missing from my developer end, right? So they have clearly mentioned this is what the step you need to follow so that that ECG uh, activities will be starting. But it was a missing from our end, right? So uh, I somehow I managed and I told uh, we noted this and going forward uh, for ECG implementation, uh, all the other venues, right? It will not make impact and definitely we will overcome this during our uh, sprint retrospective and uh, 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 after that a client also got uh, understood the situation and uh, yeah so so such such activities happen uh, so not with me as well okay trusting okay so let me give you one more scenario during your sprint planning meeting uh, your dev team you know let's say two of your team member are fighting and then you have to be able to make a decision that who will take a small or easy task. So as a scrum master, what you will do in such kind of scenarios? Yeah, definitely. It is an interesting uh, Sunan, if I say, right. So see, there, there could be uh, uh, different, different scenarios, right? So uh, if I understood properly, uh, you are asking, like uh, there could be two resources who are not able to uh, finalize or uh, uh, they, they were uh, lagging for uh, uh, taking decision who will work on which item, right? So exactly. one yeah. item they were not able to finalize whether who will take uh, responsibility for this. Yeah, so in that case, what I will suggest, I will see if uh, both are uh, fresher or uh, they need uh, uh, I mean, uh, they, they should get a chance to work on this item uh, for their future benefit. Then definitely I will use uh, pair uh, mapping and uh, let them uh, work both together. Okay, uh, no need to spend more time on this. If both are experienced and still they are not able to understand the situation and they are fighting for this, then what I will do as per my suggestion, I will park this particular task for some time let we will move further and complete all the other tasks and then 
uh, when I will, uh, I mean, uh, based on a capacity availability of the resource, I will ask. Now you take decision who will work on this, and accordingly, uh, uh, definitely it it will go with some some other resource or whoever is available at that time for based on the capacity. Let's say example uh, uh, capacity and this uh, decision or who who will take uh, the decision to work on this that also not able to possible at this moment then what i will do i will ask the technical expert who is joining the uh, in the sprint planning meeting right i'll ask them like how critical of this item definitely there could be a chance like uh, this uh, uh, item is very important though it is a very small activities but it could be a, a, um, a challenging for other activities those will be lagging if you are not completing this right so such uh, action items what i will do i'll ask the technical uh, expertise the person who is there and will ask like uh, uh, who who can work on this accordingly we'll decide so it will go there yeah Okay, okay, okay. So if I'm going to ask you that uh, how you are going to introduce uh, agile or Scrum uh, to someone who is not from a business, so let's say you want to uh, want to describe this agile or Scrum to your to your parents, to your friends, to your kid. So how you will explain this to them in a very you know layman terminology? Yeah, definitely. It's a uh, like I could say like a very interesting, right? So um, I will tell the benefit of this uh, agile or the Scrum, uh, the, the framework what we we are planning to implement, right? So it is nothing but it's a rule and the responsibility of the team members who will work for what. That's all, and the trust between each other. So the the more collaborate each other and the more trust. And the values, whatever we are having in Agile, the four value and twelve principles. That is the uh, main uh, activities or main strategy between all of us to get the win-win, right? So that part uh, I will try to explain them. If they uh, they are having any challenges to understand this, I will bring some examples. Like uh, uh, let's say some function we are planning to do. And in that function, I will assign some task to this guy, that guy, and the, the, everyone will be responsible to complete their task on time, right? And uh, uh, once the task they will complete, there there could be someone who will coach them uh, uh, in case they are lagging for something. So the scrum master will be doing this like that. I I I will uh, I mean I, I'm trying to explain them. I hope this will be helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, okay. So, how you do uh, estimation in your project? Yeah. So uh, actually, uh, mm, uh, in Scrum, we all know, right? Estimation is kind of estimation, right? It's a estimation. We cannot predict about this. But when we are talking about in Scrum, like user stories, so. user story is a feature which we are going to implement so we do not know like how the size of the user story is big small medium whatever so we used to uh, use a technique uh, to uh, evaluate or uh, the size of the user story here we are using uh, planning poker and fibonacci series uh, for uh, uh, giving the user size the point right user point size so um, by using by giving this what happen no it's kind of like uh, uh, relative size it's not like linear it's relative size so that if the uh, the user story is small consider this as a three point and if it is bigger than the uh, previous one then we can come up with the next number right so in this way we can come off for the uh, estimation for user stories yeah okay okay and uh, in your experience uh, did you work with distributed teams and did you find it any challenges working with distributed teams 
Uh, of course, uh, uh, Sunant, now the situation is very worst for, I mean, now at least it was coming back with uh, some uh, fun activities. But initially, when during COVID-19 started and the team was uh, uh, stopped in their own uh, environment and they were not able to start in the uh, office or all these things, right? So it was challenging for everyone. So we started uh, slowly communicating uh, over uh, like uh, uh, video chat or Zoom, all those things. And slowly the environment was changed. But yes, uh, it was a challenge for everyone to understand each other, how to communicate. Because in Scrum, the main principle here is you have to communicate with each other and to understand each other how we are going further. Right. So the discussion, whatever we are doing, like, uh, for example, in uh, sprint uh, uh, stand-up call, right? In, in the stand-up call, if each everyone uh, was not there available and we are talking something like blah, blah, it will not help help out. Right. So that's why I believe everyone should be on the uh, on the one place where we can discuss each other, the team can discuss. We means the team can discuss each other and they could uh, they could understood further steps how how they can move further, right? So that that kind of challenges was there, but now it was somehow managed. Okay, okay. And did you heard about uh, this term called uh, zero sprint or spike? Yes, 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 Sunan. So zero sprint actually uh, nothing but it's a, it's kind of like, like a planning before we start work, right? It's a like plan. So uh, we used to plan uh, who who are the team members will work with us and how the com how complexity of this uh, project and uh, uh, what should be the sprint length of uh, this project and based on my previous uh, experience of the uh, team members experience or velocity how long this uh, uh, i mean it's it's kind of estimation it's kind of high level estimation with the product owner uh, so those activities we used to discuss in, during uh, our sprint zero so that after that we will start our sprint And what is uh, SPI? Okay, this is about uh, sprint zero. What is the difference between sprint zero and spike or both other different terms, right? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. spike uh, already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So spike is something, let's say, uh, team decided uh, to work on this uh, particular uh, story points, right? And they started work on this. But somehow because of their problem or because of some uh, stakeholders expectation or there are some new task, uh, new uh, features uh, important uh, came into the picture and they wanted to uh, add that activities during this sprint. Uh, I mean to say like uh, if the, uh, the features are increased or because of something, if the features are decreased from the uh, estimated uh, work or the sprint, uh, uh, what do you say? A sprint backlog uh, items. Then that in that position we can say like it's a spike of our work, right? So the features are if it was increased or decreased, that could be the reason for this uh, spike. Yeah. So this is different, and that is uh, the uh, sprint zero is different actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And do you know what is the definition of done and definition of ready? Yeah, so, uh, mm, uh, so uh, let's see, uh, like uh, when we are, uh, the team was about to start sprint planning, by the time if the product backlog items are not ready or it is uh, uh, not available with proper estimation, all these things, then it is very difficult for the team members to pick any uh, product backlog items during our sprint planning, right? So uh, this is the task with the product owner mainly to take care for definition of ready. So if the uh, product backlog, the items are uh, ready with acceptance criteria, all this, or the uh, story has been splitted properly, 
all there there are a few checkpoints right so those checkpoints uh, should be taken care during your uh, what do you say like uh, in in your product backlog so it will be taken care by product owner okay so this is what uh, definition of ready and coming back to uh, definition of done right dod so this is kind of like uh, when developers they have completed their work and they completed the testing or it was matching with the acceptance criteria whatever uh, we have mentioned i mean the product owner has mentioned so those checkpoints are available in definition of done so this is depends on organization to organization like how how the dod will be designed right so this is how and going forward when there is a changes during your retrospective then definition of done can be modified okay so yeah this is what the difference between dod and dor okay sounds good okay and manoj do you know like uh, uh, for example uh, your team is completing the given user stories before the given sprint okay so let's say you have a two week sprint but your team is able to finish their work let's say within a week i'm just giving you some hypothetical uh, scenario but all right if it will there so what you will do as a scrum master what was wrong is it right or is it bad or is it good yeah so first of all uh, sunand i i would like to understand uh, why the team has been completed uh, the estimated uh, work um within half sprint right if it is a two week sprint and you are telling they have completed the task within one week right so they have another one week with them so first of all maybe uh, team was uh, thinking there are some uh, third party or there are some dependencies and it, it could be a challenge for them that's why they took more uh, uh, they, they they estimated like it it might take more time so that's why Uh, it was estimated accordingly but uh, when they started work on this so uh, uh, there was no challenge uh, such thing what they were they were thinking but uh, uh, because of this they were able to complete the task right so in that case what i will do i will ask them to uh, talk with product owner and they if possible they can uh, pull some work some product backlog Uh, from uh, the uh, uh, product backlog and we can uh, work on this in this sprint as well right so that uh, we can improve our velocities and also we cannot spend uh, I, i mean we will not lose the time whatever we have now so that that could be possible yeah okay but uh, do you go back and check like why they have finished it early In, in some kind of retrospective maybe the estimation is not right or yeah yeah that that, that 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 yeah so those things we will discuss during retrospective like uh, how how it was happen and why it was uh, uh, like uh, missed from our end and uh, so the estimation was not uh, i mean the estimation was that much difference here okay so those things we will discuss definitely during our uh, sprint retrospective, retrospective call yeah okay Okay, so one last question for you. So now let's assume your team is uh, very mature enough, you know, and they are self-organized or self-managed. So do you feel like they still need a scrum master in the team? Yeah, good question, Sunan. <laughs> yeah. So see, uh, first of all, we should understand like why scrum master, right? So um, as for my understanding, scrum master is a coach, is a servant leader for the team. So. Uh, he is there to uh, give the guidance and uh, uh, give the direction for them when they are stuck somewhere so though they were uh, like self organized and very talented team but still coach should be there for helping them anywhere like right? it's kind of a cricket uh, um, cricket team and where the coach is there for helping them that's all so definitely i could say like scrum master definitely is required for the scrum team yeah okay okay so i think we are good manoj uh, thanks thanks a lot for your time thank you so much sunan for your time as well and it was a nice talking with you yeah definitely okay